Hallelujah. We're setting the atmosphere in this place, so it's a little uh, dark in here. So it's not evening, but we thank God for another day. Amen. We thank God for his presence. Um, we thank God for his love. We're going to go to God in prayer this afternoon. and so excited um, that you are here to, to worship a living Savior um, with us as we usher in the presence of the Lord. Where will we be without the Lord? Where will we be? without his love? Where would we be without his grace? We serve an amazing God. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you today, Lord, and we say thank you for this day. Father, thank you for your presence here. Father God, thank you, Lord, for allowing us, God, this chance to be with you, Father. And we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you have your way in this worship experience, Father God, we owe you our lives. That's the reality of it all, God. We owe you everything that we have. So God, with everything that you've given us, God, for everything that you've placed in the inside of us, God, we give back to you. God, and we ask that you be pleased. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we are open to receive what you have for us today. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that our eyes are open, Father. We lift our messenger up to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for your anointing. God, we thank you for your power, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit resting, God, Father God, in this place, God, and in our hearts. We bless your name. You are so great to us. You are so amazing. We cannot put to words, God, how amazing you are to us, God, but we pray, Lord, as we draw closer to you, Father God, that our lives be an example of our gratitude to you, God, that our hearts, God, in the confession of our heart, Father God, be an example, Father God, of how we are grateful for who you are to us. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, that someone's life will be touched, Father God. That someone's hurt, Father God, will be healed, Father God. That someone's brokenness, Father God, will be mended, God, because of your presence, because of your power, and because of your Holy Spirit. We bless you. God, make us more like you. That is our desire. We know we'll never be perfect. But God, we thank you, Lord, that we serve a perfect God who continues to work and move through our lives. So we ask in the name of Jesus that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. God, we bless you. We love you. We thank you. You are worthy, worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, oh God, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. What amazing God, what amazing God, oh, yes God, yes God, yes God, let praises rise from the inside. 
from the inside of me make you delight Hallelujah. in the inside Hallelujah. in the inside Hallelujah. of me set me on fire from the inside from the inside of me Come feel my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be. All I want yeah. is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. Oh God, oh God. to be lifted high oh God oh God oh we want you to be lifted high oh God be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high Dead high, dead high. Come on, everybody, let praises rise. Praises rise from the inside. From the inside. From the inside. From the inside. Of me. Make you delight. In the inside. Uh... 
joining us today. We welcome you to our Uplift Sabbath services. Uh, whether you're online or with, we have folk here, we bless God for you and we thank each and every one of you. Uh, this is, and Pastor uh, continues to reiterate it, this is a day where we honor God, where we celebrate God, where we, as a praise team just got through singing, where we lift him up where we give him his reverence, where we give him his due. We begin to praise God. We begin to worship God. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your presence here today. And we just bless God for you and pray that whatever your heart desires, that God continues to bless you. Because the word of God says that he, get, he will give you the righteous desires of your heart. So I thank God for each and every one of you. Again, for those of you that joined us online. Uh, again, we just bless God for you. Just want to pray before we go into the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, again for this day. This day, God, is a gift. And Lord, when we receive gifts, Father God, from people, especially when we receive gifts from the creator, we say thank you, God. Lord, we are grateful. We are humbled in so many ways, God, that you saw fit just to wake us up this morning, God. So many people, God, that laid their heads down last night with intentions of getting up this morning. They had plans, God. But Lord, you chose us to get up today and to minister to those, God, who are in need to be a light in a world of darkness, to use all of our gifts and talents that, Lord, that you have bestowed upon us, God. 
And for that, God, we say thank you. I pray right now, God, that as you speak through me, Father God, that your word is true, that your word will not go out, vo go out and return void. It will accomplish what it will, and it will benefit and prosper who it's sent to. That's what your word says, God. So we thank you, Lord, right now. I thank you, Lord, for open ears. I thank you, Lord, for receptive hearts, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, for open ears, God, for you say in your word, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear, God. And I thank you, Lord, for receptive hearts, God. For your servant Paul told us, God, that we should receive the implanted word of God, which is able to save our souls. So we thank you, God, for open ears and receptive hearts, God. And not just that, God. We know, Lord, that our faith without works is dead. So Lord, I, I pray right now, Lord, you give us a spirit to be doers, God, as well. So again, thank you, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for honoring your word. Because you told your servant Jeremiah that I watch over my word to perform it. So we thank you, Lord, right now for what your word is going to accomplish, Lord. Not me, but what your word is going to accomplish. And for that, God, all God's people, all God's chosen, said amen. 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 So, I want to share a familiar passage of scripture that we've, if you've been at church any length of time, you've heard, especially this one particular verse out of this chapter, actually a couple of verses out of this chapter. But again, today, just want to exhort the word of God and lift the word of God before you. That again, that as you hear it, my, my prayer is that you begin to take on a greater appreciation for the Lord that you serve, for the Lord that I serve, that we all take a greater appreciation for what God is doing in our lives and what he has gotten us through. So this word is coming from Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Amen. And before we get into the word, just want to set some context for you. Some of you have heard of the old saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. We find David who penned this psalm, who wrote this psalm. This was, this was his situation. This is what he was dealing with. David initially was on the run from King Saul. What's interesting is at one point in time, Saul and David were allies. But because Saul's heart turned hard, and actually Saul became jealous of David, that David became Saul's enemy. So David is on the run from his nemesis, from his rival, and from his enemy. Anybody here ever been on the run? From your past? From past mistakes? From people? From words that have been sown into your spirit that were not meant to benefit you, but to tear you down? Some of us, amen, may have been physically on the run from things and from situations. So you can, if you've ever been on the run, you can identify with David and imagine the fear, imagine the trepidation, imagine the uncertainty because people of God, when you and I are being pursued, it seems as if our enemies are relentless in their pursuit of us. And listen, when you are on the run, and you're fearful. Now keep in mind, you're on the run because you don't have the strength and the wherewithal and the bandwidth to fight, to fight. That's why you're on the run. You don't have what's necessary to stand and fight. So you choose the best option for survival, and that is to run. Now, here's what's interesting. Sometimes when we're running from things, we don't even know what we're running to. We're just trying to get away. 
Imagine, if you will, the energy it takes to do that. Imagine how unsettled your spirit is when you're running. Imagine the depression and the frustration that sets in. Again, a fear that sets in when you're on the run. This is where David finds himself, on the run from King Saul. To make matters worse, David, while he is running, happens upon a king named Abimelech, who is in the nation of the Philistines. And some of you Bible readers remember that David killed their champion, Goliath, who was a Philistine. <laughs> so David is on the run from a, a man who used to be his rival, his own countryman. <laughs> remember, David and Saul are countrymen. He's on the run from his own countryman. And his own countryman, his own friend at one point in time, chases him into his enemy. Listen, listen, listen. So David runs into King Abimelech, his sworn enemy, known enemy. And so what does David do? He doesn't have, again, the wherewithal to fight. He doesn't have the resources to fight. So what does he do? This is what he does. Because as my mom would say, when David ran into Abimelech, Abimelech had him dead to rights. <laughs> Abimelech had an army, and they could have killed David right then and there. Here's what David does. King David. David begins to froth at the mouth. David begins to roll on the ground. David begins to act as if he is insane, crazy, a lunatic, if you will. And Abimelech looks and says, this, not, this can't be who we think it is. And they let David go. They leave. And David is saved. Sometimes people of God is interesting that when we run into dire situations, we get out of character. We do things and make decisions that we otherwise would not make. But it's something about survival that will make us do things and say things that we normally would not do. And in this instance, David, who was on the run from Saul, who ran into his enemy, had to do something out of character in order to survive. Some of us have taken on more debt in order to survive. Some of us have said yes to things we know we should have said no to in order to survive. Some of us have partnered with people that we know we shouldn't have partnered with, but we did it in order to survive. Some of us have stayed too long in relationships in order to survive. It was out of character, but we felt it necessary in order to survive. So after all of that, David looks at his situation with Saul and he looks at the situation he just came out of with Abimelech and he looks at the fact that I went from the frying pan and into the fire but I'm alive I've been delivered hallelujah and I'm here today with blood running fresh through my veins, clothed in my right mind, and all activity of limbs. And he pins this psalm. And he says this in Psalms 34, 1, that I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> His praises shall 
continually be in my mouth. My soul makes boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Now you have some context. When you hear, I will bless the Lord at all times, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Now you know why he penned that. This was a man who was on the run from an enemy who, if he was caught, would have been killed. This is a man who was on the run from his enemy but ran into another enemy and should have been killed. Did something out of character. Life was saved. And instead of just keeping on, instead of just going on about his life, he stops. And he recognizes this. Had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? And so he says, people of God, you don't know what I've been through. So let me share this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises will continually be in my mouth. That should be somebody's testimony today. It is mine. I know that. I cannot speak for anybody else. But it is my testimony. Because there have been times in my life when I have went from a frying pan, frying pans, <laughs> into many fires. And here I am on, I think it was August 6th. We'll say August 6th, 2021. Standing before you saying this should be your testimony. That you will bless the Lord at all times. And God's praises should continually be in your mouth. Verse 2 says this. I will boast my soul. I'm sorry. Makes boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear it and be glad. In other words, when you look at your soul, your soul is your emotions your uh, uh, and everything else that makes up who you are. In other words, David's saying, listen, all of my being... <laughs> Everything I have in my humanity, I, I make it known that the Lord has delivered me. Everything that I have. My wife and I attended the church years ago. And we had there was this woman in our ministry. Her name was Sister Carla. Irving was her name. And if there was anyone who praised God with all of their soul, fiber, and being, it was her. She stood up throughout the service, clapping, dancing. And at the end of the service, she would be sweating. She gave it all to God. Because she knew, like we all know, we've been delivered. So you cannot reserve and hold back praise. You cannot reserve and hold back worship. Why? Because you and I have been delivered. And our testimony is we will bless the Lord at all times. And listen to what he says in verse 2. He said, let the humble <laughs> hear it and be glad. Deliverance should humble you. Deliverance should humble you. Then he tells everyone in verse 3. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. He says, I'm not going to keep this to myself. I want us all to get together and celebrate God. Because he knows this. I'm not the only one who the Lord has delivered. You've been delivered. You've been delivered. You've been delivered. So let's do this. All the saints of God who have been delivered, let's magnify the Lord. Let's glorify the Lord. Let's lift the Lord up. He goes from a personal testimony to say, listen, we all should be joining in this. Because of my experience, I've, I've witnessed God and I've experienced God. And because I have, I want us all to join in this. Let us magnify his name together. He says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. Sought the Lord. How did you seek the Lord? Listen, Jesus talks about the woman who had 10 coins and lost one. He also talks about the shepherd who had 100 sheep and lost one. What did Christ do? What did, what did Christ say the shepherd did? He went after that one. He sought. What did the woman do who lost that one coin? 
the Bible says she got her lantern and a broom and she swept until she found it. Listen, people of God, what the Lord is saying and what David is saying is seek the Lord. Go, go to all lengths to get an understanding of what the Lord is doing in your life. I, I have a question for those of you who are asking God for clarity. My question is, how badly are you seeking him? The word of God says, seek the Lord while he may be found. And that's my question today. For those of us, I'm in the same camp. For those of us who have questions, when, why, how, my question is to all of us, how bad are we seeking God? We seek so many other things. How bad are we seeking God? Is the question. Verse 5 says, those who look to him are radiant and their faces are never ashamed. This verse 6 says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. Those who seek the Lord will be rewarded. How will I be rewarded, Minister Lyons? Peace. Tranquility. Understanding. Acceptance. What do you mean by acceptance? We begin to accept what the Lord is doing in our lives and not step outside and do things that are contrary to what he's doing in our life. Because the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to tear you down. So, those of us who seek the Lord are radiant, are pleasant, are loving, are kind speak well of each other and well of God. In verse 6 he says, this poor man cried amen and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. This humble man, is another word for poor, this humble man cried. Don't let that, don't let that get past you. This humble man cried. In other words, this humble man poured out. He shared with God all that needed to be shared. Lord, I don't feel like I need to feel. Lord, I'm not where I believe I should be. And I'm angry. Lord, things in my life have not lined up the way I think they line, they should be lined up. Lord, I'm crying out to you because some of the things that are happening in my life right now just don't make any sense. Lord, yes, I know I should be grateful, and I am, Lord, but this is how I feel. Isn't it great that you and I have a God that we can go to and cry out to and share with God our intimate thoughts, our intimate feelings? our intimate frustrations, our intimate regrets. But at the same time, thank you for what he's doing in our lives. This humble man cried, humble man cried. And the word of God says, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Humble, cried. The response saved from all troubles. Pour out to God and there's a deliverance for you. Share your soul with God and there's a deliverance for you. Be at peace with God and there's deliverance for you. Seek him and there's deliverance for you. Listen, Psalms 34 is about a guy who got delivered from death I can speak for anybody here, only myself. 
There have been too many times when my life could have been snatched from me. Too many to count. There, I'm sure there are times I didn't even know about. Glory to God. My life could have been snatched from me. So Psalm, Psalms 34 is about a man who understands what it means to be delivered from death. Verse 7, the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him and delivers them. So God dispatches help for you in times of trouble. So you and I are never alone. Think about this. As much hell and high water as you and I have encountered, I'd like to remind some of us that it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. You couldn't even, how worse could that have been? You shouldn't even be here saying amen. You shouldn't even be here clapping your hands. You shouldn't even be here listening to me. It could have been worse. You shouldn't even be thinking straight. Walking in some cases. Why? Because the Lord sent his angels to encamp around you. Which means you have full protection. I used to work in insurance. We have this term called full coverage. Bumper to bumper. No matter what happens on the car, you're covered. No matter what, no matter if something happens to the to the bumpers or inside the car, doesn't matter. You're covered. And that's a word for somebody today. You're covered. You're covered. You're covered. I'm covered. You're covered. Front, side, back, covered. Angels encamp around you. My brother and my sister online, you're covered. It's like going out to eat with someone. And you have fixed in your mind that, okay, I'm going to, they're going to pay for their meal, and I'm going to pay for mine. When the check comes, your friend says, don't worry about it. I'm covering it. You're covered. Put your money away. I got this. Put away the doubt. Put away the fear. Put away the frustration. My wife will tell you, I got really frustrated this morning. Put it away. Why? You're covered. Amen. You and I are covered. That's a hallelujah right there. That's how I will bless the Lord at all time praise. His praise will continue to be in my mouth. Why? Because I'm covered. Come what may, I'm covered. Whatever they're going to say, they're going to say, I'm covered. If I, went, if I went right when I should have, when the Lord told me to go left, I'm covered. I mean, I feel good. It's okay. Could be worse. I'm covered. Verse 8. <laughs> oh, taste and see. <laughs> that the Lord is what? Good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What David is saying here when he says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. What David says is, I'm inviting you to see how good this God is. Because I can tell you how he delivered me. Not from one storm, not from two storms, but from many storms. So when you see that verse, David, is, it's, it's an invitation. He says, oh, taste and see. In other words, come here. Let me tell you about a, a man <laughs> who delivered me, who saved me, who got me through, and who got me over, and who has me covered. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. In other words, what God is saying, what David is saying, that as you and I run to the word of God, as you and I run to the saints of God, that's refuge. As you and I uh, meet online for Sabbath service, for Sunday service, for prayer, for Bible study, as you and I meet 7 a.m. and 12 noon, as we meet, we're taking refuge. As we meet, we're taking refuge. How does the Lord begin to bless? 
he begins to bless those who take refuge. Refuge, relief, in other words. This is a time of relief, glory to God, for each and every one of us. This is how great God is. He carves out a space and a time for us to get relief. So this is a house, glory to God, amen, Pastor. This is a house of refuge. Uplift is a house of refuge. And as those of us begin to work in the house of refuge and serve in the house of refuge and come to the house of refuge when we're in need, we'll be blessed. Blessed with what? Paul says this in Philippians 4, 19. My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. So how, So when I seek refuge and I get blessed, how is he going he to bless me? His blessing is going to be in direct correlation with your need. His blessing is going to be in direct correlation. You need to hear that. His blessing is going to be in correlation with your need. So if you are in need of peace, you are blessed because that need is met. If you are in need of food, spiritual, physical, or otherwise, that need will be met. If you are in need of company, that need will be met. If you are in need of direction, that need will be met. Because why? You and I have chosen to seek refuge. And as we seek refuge, we're blessed and our needs are met. Yes, you may think you need more money. What you may need is more discipline. What you may need is a plan. What you may need is some structure in your life. What you may need is some intentionality. That's the need. I'm sharing this with my wife this morning, I mean about an hour ago. And I was like, you know, I had to switch out suits because the suit's too tight. Then I caught myself. I said, no, I've gained too much weight. So the need is to lose weight. Amen. She's sitting there, she'll, not, not it, she'll tell you. Amen. That's the need. Amen. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord. You, um, you, his saints. For those who fear, listen to this. For those who fear him have no what? Lack. Verse 10 says, the young lions suffer want and hunger. But those, but those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. Let's go back to verse 9. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints. For those who fear him have no lack. And you see where it says the young lions suffer and want. But those who seek the Lord have no, lack no good thing. Fear just simply means to reference God, esteem God, praise God when you have the opportunity, and we all do. And as we do that, we have no lack. Everything is, everything is fulfilled. And I just believe, and this is my prayer too, that those things that we want, that are not in, the line, and not in line with God, gives us uh, what God wants for us, that those things begin to dissipate and disappear. Which will, which will bring about more contentment. Amen. The young, I mean, on this, the young lions suffer and want and hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall lack no good thing. So people of God, David went from the frying pan into the fire and he was delivered. And he shared, we must praise him. We must give him glory. Now how you praise him and how I praise him is two different, you know, it's two different things. You know, some, some people praise their own way. And, you know, we shouldn't be judging people as to how they praise and worship. But I just believe this. In all my years of living, and all the things I've been through in life, uh, I'll just say this, people of God. Praising God is one component to your deliverance. Praising God is one component to your deliverance. And, and, and praise should not be like pulling teeth because David said, you know what? I should have been dead twice and I'm not. 
And as a result of that, you don't have to, as we used to say in the old church, pump and pride me to praise. All I have to do is just look back to my yesterday, to my last, last hour, last week, five years ago, and see where I am now. And I, I, I swear to y'all, <laughs> hallelujah, thank God. That, you know, I may not be where I want to be, but you all know the saying, thank God we're not where we used to be. Because there were, there were times when you think we were going to get out of this. But look at your neighbor and say, look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we will bless you at all times. Your praises will continue to be in our mouth. We will cry out to you, Father God. Why? Because we love you, Lord. Because you're the great sustainer, the great, uh, the great provider. But Lord, you're also the great deliverer, God. And for that, God, we say thank you. Pray right now, Lord, that um, as we begin to think about your goodness and kindness toward us and how you delivered us, Father God. Lord, we won't hold back our praise. We won't hold back our worship, God. We glorify you. We magnify you. As, your, as David said, let us, we're going to exalt your name together, God, because we've all been through some things, God, and we've all been delivered, God. So when I bring my praise and my friend brings their praise, we all praise you together, God, and what a wonderful praise it is, God. We love you, Lord. And we thank you, God, for all that you've done and continue to do. Because you are a great God, the mighty God, the one and only true God. As the old folks say, you're the God who sits high and looks low. And we thank you, God, for who you are. It's in Jesus' name we pray as we exalt you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord has delivered us. He saved us. He kept us from some things. He's rescued us. And I can only imagine how David felt knowing that the Lord had delivered him from death, not once, but twice. Now, I don't know if you've ever gotten some real good news and how excited you are and how you're just filled with so much joy and so much gratitude to whoever, if someone gave you something or did something for you, just the gratitude that you have and the excitement that you have. And I believe that that's the same excitement and the same gratitude that we owe our Father. That in the midst of it all, we can say, God, I praise you. God, I thank you because I realized that you did not have to do it, but you did. You could not have decided to spare my life, but you did. So forever and always, what I have, I give to you. Hallelujah. Forever and always, what I have, the praise and the worship that I have, it belongs to you. And it's due to you. That's the Father that we serve. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. Come on, everybody.
body. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. All together, love.
God, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. Come on, everybody. Here I am. Here.
Amen, my brothers and sisters. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Each and every one of us has been delivered from multiple situations. And to be honest, sometimes thinking about those situations can be at times honestly painful. However, the praise is that you and I were delivered. And as a result of being delivered, we will continue to bless God, lift up his name, and praise him unconditionally and continually. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this day. Yes, Lord, we will bless your name. We'll lift up your name. For all those that we encounter, Father God, let them see your name on us, God. Let them see your power in us, God. Let them see and feel your love and contentment in each and every one of us, God. We love you today, God. This is a day, Lord, where we honor you, God. There's none like you. We celebrate you, God. And we thank you, God, for who you are. And all God's people said, amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah.